about last year we talked about EMT, electromagnetic therapy, and we talked about a different variety of them. One of them was using coils and frequencies. Uh, on 9 October 2010, I became the dubious, uh, I have received the dubious honor and pleasure of uh, a uh, active motor round, uh, being the recipient of uh, what was uh, uh, an actual live motor round that was a practice round, but it was discharged. Uh, it, was, it failed it, and uh, in flight and didn't go off right away. A little guy went over to, to uh, he was fascinated by this thing, all a falling leaf, the tail section with the tail feathers. And those of you who have been in the military that know what the old mortar rounds are like, uh, the tail section has, is the business end of the puppy, especially in a practice round. And they're only 20%. They make a big noise. They don't drill a hole in the ground when they land. But this was at a large uh, uh, gathering of youth. And they had a demonstration out uh, that was demarked off. But this one broke open and fell short. I went over. So I saw what happened. Pushed the little guy out of the way and we grabbed the, the live round, the remainder of it, by the tail fins and was in the process of throwing it into a ravine. And it made it about an inch from my hand when someone with their little iPhone caught they caught it on video when it went off. And uh, it set me on fire. It picked me up and threw me back a little ways. Uh, it drilled a hole in me, actually. Uh, left me with some shrapnel and uh, uh, some first and second degree burns uh, uh, all over uh, about 30 percent, uh, mild burns all over. Uh, it got most of my hair, the hair on my arms and some of my face hair was all singed off and, and uh, I had a mild sunburn everywhere. And some of my clothes, my polyester clothes, <laughs> uh, polyester is not good when you're in a fire. but. Uh, uh, it drilled a hole in me, and there was some third-degree burn, soot and ash, you know, and I was leaking hydraulic fluid pretty bad. And uh, uh, I was kind of screwed up. Uh, the doctor, which was a Ph.D. neurosurgeon at the scene there, it was part of a reserve army unit, he said it would take about 18 to 20 or 24 months in three or four plastic surgeries before skin grafts before I would ever see skin growing over the injury again. We um, uh, used 512, 432, and 256 hertz. Uh, well, in the, very in low the A432, frequency. In the A432's tuning, the 512 and the 256 is the C, which I'll get into in just a minute. It's the, it's the note of C, or the heart chakra frequency. And the 432 is the A, or the crown chakra frequency. And uh, he designed this so that it runs multiple frequencies simultaneously, and it can run them both directions in three days, basically less than 72 hours, the first and second degree burn was pretty much gone. How many days, okay now, we went through, we went through a series of where we were treating this area with the coil and, you know, and rubbing, you know, do, sathering it down with the vitamin E and aloe vera and uh, uh, it would scab over. At first, first time it scabbed over and then fell off, it was about four or five days it scabbed over again and then fell off. And then it was three or four days, then three and a half days, then three days, then two days, and it kept scabbing over and falling off. But how many days before there was new skin that didn't scab over anymore? It was actually 32 days, one month. The doctor, the unit, that the, guy, the surgeon that was out there at the accident that was trying to plug the hydraulic leak and everything else, he said it would be 18 to 20 or 24 months and that I would need at least three if not four skin grafts before I had any decent skin on there. We have another friend that got cooked just recently. He didn't get burnt near as bad as I did in this spot. And his skin grafts, that was uh, December 12th, a year and a half ago, and he is nowhere near and he's not tanning on it yet or anything. But, uh, Greg, you got that? Okay. Here it comes, for all, ladies. That, that right there is what's left of that injury. 
It's still kind of painful from time to time. And after the treatment with the coil, it was very painful for hours. Uh, the, the pain didn't ease up with the treatment immediately. It actually got more painful. And so it was counterproductive. I was thinking, oh, gee, why am I doing this? Do I like pain? Um, but we kept up with the regimen. And what you see, I, I, this hasn't been treated for four months, three months. And that was 09 October when that injury transpired. And uh, I, I was in bed for weeks. Uh, I was horizontal, stuck in bed. Uh, I was screwed up. There were four pieces of shrapnel that he, he, said that he said that there was shrapnel in there and that it would have to be surgically taken out. But uh, I told him not to sweat it. I'd take care of it. I had all four pieces festered out. And uh, we're treating it with the coil and the volume in Ian Oliveira. And one by one, these pieces of shrapnel festered out. Only three of them were metal. One of them uh, was, was some type of composite plastic. But they slowly uh, festered out. And they'd come to the surface, and, they're under, and literally underneath the scab, there was a pustule of, of white blood cells. And the scab would fall off, and, I, and one time the scab fell off and that pustule was there and the piece of metal, a little triangular shaped piece of metal, like a piece of pie, very sharp, was sitting right there and fell out into my hand. It just, they, it all festered out, no surgery or anything. So, uh, so basically what you're saying is that the doctor told you that it would be a year and a half to two years before you would even get skin in the area and with using music and the, and the rodent coil, you essentially healed it in 32 days, one month. Is that right? The coil, vitamin E and olive vera, and, you know, and the music frequencies, the natural harmonic music frequencies. Um, that's, yeah, that's, that's it. That's fantastic. I mean, that's fantastic. Thank you, John, very much. <laughs> Great. Uh, uh,